I am Jack's dry and itchy skin, but I won't be if I use the Tyler Durden soap. If you don't get that reference, I, uh, I don't know how to talk to you. <laughs> How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. This is Soap and Clay, and you are here for 365 days of soap. Now, today we're doing the Tyler Durden, which is one of my favorite bars ever, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. But before we get to that, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. Now for day 11, for 365 days of soap, we are making the Tyler Durden. The Tyler Durden is one of my most favorite bars to make. I've been making it since we first opened Soap and Clay, you know, five, six years ago, and it is just amazing. It's a cinnamon and black pepper blend. It has activated charcoal and kaolin clay in it. It has a beautiful mantra swirl throughout the thing. It is such a joy to make, and it's been one of my best sellers since we first opened the shop, and I'm gonna show you how we make it today. Let's go. This is the Tyler Durden. This soap has been around in my line since the very beginning. I actually, it was the first soap that I created in my men's line when I first started. All of my guy friends that I told I was, you know, making soap, they uh, all responded with like, like Tyler Durden, like Fight Club. And I honestly, in, in all honesty, I didn't get the reference. And that's not to say that I didn't know what Fight Club was, because I super did. I'd seen it a bajillion times. So I had to go back and rewatch Fight Club. And um, yeah, it turns out there is a big soap element in this movie. It's, you know, one of the one of the themes really. And I kind of missed that because I was sort of busy staring at Brad Pitt's abs. Really. Anyway, went back and watched it and went, yeah, like like Fight Club, we're going to do the thing. And so the Tyler Durden soap was born. Now, this soap is a really fun soap to make. It is a mantra swirl, and we're really playing with dualities throughout all of it. So you have the white and the, and the black, you have the cinnamon pepper on the black side, and then you have a sort of lighter like pepperberry scent on the, uh, the white side. And then you have the red, you know, interspersed throughout because, you know, lots of fighting and bleeding and, you know, all of the things that we don't talk about with Fight Club. But the things we can talk about are, you know, the, the rest of the bar. The, uh, this bar has two different types of clay in it. So we have the uh, white has the kaolin clay in it, loads of kaolin in that guy. And the black is the activated charcoal, which is a wonderful addition to soaps. We have uh, lots of detoxing and everything that goes along with activated charcoal in soaps and scrubs and all that jazz. Now for the, yeah, this is, this is my life. This is every day there's some sort of element of this happening and I just, yeah, we're just, thank you, that's better, yep. So clean that up, yep, and uh, for the red, we usually put in um, a red clay as well, but I'm actually out of stock on red clay, so we are just gonna mica it up for this pour today. And yeah, we're gonna do the thing. So live water, nothing special is done to this. This particular recipe is super fatted at 5% and we have a 60-40 blend of liquid to hard oils and butters for this guy. The reason for that is this is a mantra swirl. So it's a three color swirl that you do in a log mold. And you wanna make sure that your batter stays really fluid throughout this pour. The liquid oils that go into this guy are olive oil, uh, castor oil and apricot and the solid oils we have babasu coconut and a little bit of shea 
And this particular batch, it's a very beautiful lather to this. It's a very creamy lather, which you know you're probably gonna expect with uh, the, the coconut and the the babassu as long as well as the shea. And it's a very moisturizing bar. It is easily the highest selling bar in my men's line. It has consistently been so for years and years. And that's good because I love making this bar, so I get to make it often and you get to watch the process. Now I've split my batter into three equal sections at this point and I am now going to color each section individually. And we have the, the white with the kaolin clay, the uh, lighter sort of almost floral, I'm sorry, a uh, fruity scent will go into the white down there and the really sort of spicy, the cinnamon and the black pepper goes into the black side of the bar. And the red that goes in the middle, that actually stays unscented. The reason that it stays unscented is because I really want this color more than anything else to be the one that pulls through the other two. And so I wanna keep it nice and fluid so we can accomplish that. And the particular scents that I'm working with, like cinnamon and black pepper, for example, those things, that accelerates trace like crazy. So you'll see it as I'm pouring the bar, just the difference between the white and the black soap that's going into the mold, the white will stay very, very fluid throughout the entire pour and the black is going to start to thicken up pretty significantly. And that's, you know, that's because of the cinnamon and the black pepper. A lot of essentials really can accelerate trace. They can do some very interesting things to your soap. So it is important to find, you know, whatever distributor you're going through to get your, your scents. It is important to really pay attention to their soaping notes. And if they don't have soaping notes, I strongly suggest you find another place to find your essential oils and your, uh, your fragrances. Or you will be wasting a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of product on, you know, essentially soap fails. And, you know, nobody really wants that. Now it is time for the pour. Now, this is a really fun pour. The, uh, the proper way to do this pour would be to use dividers um, to separate your colors. But I don't like using dividers because it's one more thing to clean up and then you know, you're pulling the dividers out and it can mess up the, the top of the soap and I have to resist the urge to scrape all the soap off the dividers back into the soap and then it really messes up. You know, whatever, it's a big old thing. So this is a sort of modified version of this pour. And what I do with this is I try to, as evenly as possible, lay down the two side colors and I do it sort of in stages. So you keep that white and that black basically right there in the middle as much as you possibly can. And then you take the red right down the center of the mold and pour it inside kind of high so the red can go all the way to the bottom of the, of the bar, let gravity do its thing. And then you, you know, you repeat that process again with the black and the white being poured and then the red in the middle. And that, for me, eliminates the need for dividers. This almost never um, messes up. Like, I almost never mess this one up. But you can see, yeah, you see how thick the, uh, the black soap batter is getting. Remember I was saying with the, the cinnamon and the black pepper, that definitely accelerates trace a lot. So I'm working with a thick batter and then a, a thinner white batter, but it's still great. It's still uh, totally workable and there's not gonna be any problems getting the swirl in. So I'm gonna scrape out the rest of the, the black and the white into the mold at this point and get the rest of the red right down the center there. Again, if you're if you're really steady with your pour, getting your, your red down the center, it does eliminate the need for a divider. And honestly, I find dividers more trouble than they're worth in most cases. And so I prefer to, you know, modify things to, you know, eliminate extra unnecessary tools whenever possible. And now it is time for the swirl. Now, I said earlier that this is a mantra, and this bar usually is a mantra. But you know, with the stress of filming for YouTube, the, uh, the whole mantra thing went straight out of my head. Kind of forgot I needed a hanger for this, so I used my chopstick. So instead, what you have is a lotus. I'm going to show you how to make a lotus swirl. Now, you're going to take your chopstick and go really tight with little rectangles down the length of the mold. Then you are going to take the chopstick around the perimeter, you know, three or four times to really pull the colors around. You will then wrap this bar. 
I stick it in my oven for CPOP, you can do that or not, and it will be ready to cut tomorrow. This is actually a different cut than we have seen so far. All right, so now day two, it is time for the cut. The soap has cured overnight. Again, I did see pop this. I did put it through gel phase and the bar itself, oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? That's, that's so nice. The bar itself looks great. It is soft enough to cut, but not so soft that I'm concerned. And again, I said this is a, a different cut than we've seen so far. And you know, that's that's true, because normally I'll you know take out the, the soap cutter and just immediately slice my log molds into one inch you know slices and you have your bars of soap but for this particular soap in order to release the pattern you need to cut it a little bit different see now this is what it would look like if you had just cut these into one inch blocks you know running the length of, of the soap and you know that's fine it's an interesting bar but what was really the point of me doing the skewer if that's all you're going to see so instead, what we do for a Lotus, um, also a Taiwan, and you can also do this for the Mantra, you are going to cut the entire loaf into chunks instead, and then you're going to cut those chunks, in this case, in three pieces, horizontally, right? So the entire soap block there is three inches tall. We are going to cut those in one inch chunks from top to bottom and that will really expose the pattern on the inside of it and show what the point was of using the skewer, you know, kind of at all. So with this, it's really cool how you cut soap, right? You, you can cut the blocks of soap, especially with logs, in different ways and release patterns that you didn't even know existed. Like, um, oh, a couple months ago, I posted a picture of the same bar, just cut two different ways, on my Instagram, and you know, kind of asked people which one, which one do you like better, which is the, the, the prettier cut, and it was all about where you decide to cut the bar, whether you're cutting it, you know, length or um, you know, vertically or horizontally, or you know, vertically from the side as opposed from top down. It's a big old thing. So we will definitely do lots and lots of different cuts to show you how you can change the look of your soap just by how you choose to, you know, sort of cut it into your bars. Now, this right here, again, it's a hand cut. I actually do have a cutter for this. It's just, you know, I, I didn't get it. Making life hard, it's my theme, yeah. So look at that, isn't that pretty? Now that kind of resembles a mantra, actually. It's, it's kind of close. And I think that's super cute. I love that. It's It resembles a mantra more than it does a lotus right now. So for those particular bars, it's actually closer to what the Tyler Durden is supposed to be. And that's great. And that one's beautiful. Oh yeah, see, either side of that one. Really, really like these bars. And for the rest of them, you're going to see that they're all really a lot different from bar to bar. There's there, there are no two the same. That's, it, it's so unique, it's so beautiful. It's, that's one of the beauties of handmade soap. Every single bar is unique. And it's just, I mean, wow, look at that. That one's so, so pretty. And yeah, so it's not exactly the, the cut that I was going for originally, but that doesn't, oh, look at that, it looks like a bird. You see that? Yeah, that looks like a bird, that's super cool. I love Soap Rorschach, just, I, again, that's something that I do on my Instagram channel quite a bit. Whenever I see some soaps that have interesting patterns, I'm kind of like, hey, what do you see? And it's fun watching, see, and that one ended up just straight black and white on one side and then just a, a hint of red on the other. It's so cool. That one is beautiful. I love that one a lot. Now, with this last, if you, if you noticed, the, yeah, the, uh, the swoopiness, they're definitely, they're getting more swoopy as we get towards this end of, of the soap. So these last ones will definitely yeah, be releasing what is a proper you know, lotus pattern here. So that one and then the two that go along with that are going to be a beautiful lotus. And the cool thing about a lotus is when you put the two bars of soap, like two bars of a, a cut together, it creates you know like lotus blossom like a really pretty flower and you can do tons of cool things with the actual colors 
to, look at that, that's awesome. That's like some Diablo stuff going on right there. I love that. Yeah, so there you have it. There is the Tyler Durden in, you know, a couple of ways. Now, here's what the Tyler Durden usually looks like. Look at that, that's beautiful. That's my mantra. And here's what we have today. So you let me know which one you like better in the comments. That would be awesome. And that's it for day 11 of 365. Thanks. Admit it, it's epic. I know, it's a great bar. Now, for this particular pour, it didn't quite work out the way that I thought it was going to, because again, normally I do the mantra swirl throughout this bar, and the filming for the YouTube and doing the things, it actually, it, it, it's a lot of pressure. And as a result, I kind of forgot that I needed a hanger for the mantra swirl and started swirling it with my, my chopstick. So instead, what you got was a beautiful lotus. Now, I don't normally do a lotus for the Tyler Durden, but you know, it doesn't really matter. The, the scent is still the same. You still have the kale and clay and the activated charcoal. But it was a fun way to show you the lotus, and I guess I'm going to have to be doing a proper mantra swirl for you very, very soon. Thank you so much for joining us today on Soap and Clay. I'm very glad that you guys are still hanging out with me. I really enjoy it. It's been great for me while we've been doing all the social distancing things to be able to connect you know, this way and still get the teaching in, which has been good. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to it. It really helps us grow. It's the best thing you can be doing for my small business right now. And you know, give it a like, tell your friends, share the video all those things. You can find the Tyler Durden online at soapandclay.com. You can find me on all social media platforms, handle Soap and Clay, except for Facebook, which is I don't even use soap. And you know, thanks for, thanks for coming today, guys. I will, uh, I'll see you tomorrow.